New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. The military marriage to the tech sector renews their vows. But first, you may have seen the news about how online searches for how to move to Canada spiked the day after Stuper Tuesday here in the States as the emotional con game 2016 heats up. However, you might want to rethink that. It's not always sunshine and lollipops in Canada. A British Columbia town wants GPS trackers for prolific offenders. A motion by Councilman Scott Nelson to endorse and support GPS tracking on prolific and repeat offenders was passed unanimously by Williams Lake City Council on Tuesday night. Though it wasn't specified in the motion, Nelson said Council's preferred method would be to inject the trackers into offenders. So the decision came just days after a 14-year-old boy was robbed of his BMX bike at gunpoint at the city skate park. So everybody course hit the ceiling now of course it's always a good idea to make rash laws based on one specific crime but i just want to read what nelson told the cbc just to kind of get a sense of his language quote i was stunned i've got young children myself you always hear these things happen somewhere else it's crazy there's many different ways to do it we'd like the one where you are absolutely forced to be injected so it can't be torn off as you get out of jail you're getting a shot of gps a shot of GPS, and we're going to be tracking you 24 hours a day, 365 days. We'll know everything you do, where you are, what you're up to. If there's any sense of any criminal activity, back to the Huskow you're going to go. They have programs like this throughout the world. I know that they have got a program in Washington, D.C., where they have about 1,200 people on GPS right now tracking, which monitors an individual on a constant 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, end quote. The article goes on to basically say the town council themselves don't really have the power to implement all this, and it seems somewhat unlikely, but it just, it, I don't know, it's a reminder of maybe what point we've gotten to, James. Well, at any rate, it's getting coverage on uh, CBC, so it's a lot of Canadians are hearing about it and being subtly indoctrinated. And what's not to love about this idea? You don't like prolific offenders, do you, James? You're not on their side. Of course... First, they come for the prolific offenders. Then they come for the offenders. Then they come for, oh, well, the children. I mean, we got to keep track of the children and elderly and the senile. And the, oh, well, what about someone on medical, with a medical condition? And then, well, everyone else has one. Why don't you? I mean, I, I don't think people need to be told this is how it works, but this is how it works. It is social conditioning 101, and it just is a little tiny thin edge of a wedge at first, and then the wedge gets bigger and bigger and bigger until they've got their foot in the door. <laughs> And then they're through the door. So, uh, yep. I mean, injecting, injecting GPS tracking into people is now being talked about. And of course, it's not going to happen overnight, but it is now being talked about. They're introducing the idea, you know, here comes the chip. It's, uh, we've been talking about it for years. We're going to be talking about it for years and they're going to keep trying to do it. And, uh, all we have to do is resist the conditioning. We do not need this technology in order to track anyone, let alone everyone. What? if we're already being tracked all the time everywhere by the devices we carry around. I, that's the interesting thing that you've been talking about a bunch now. And as soon as you were doing the, the disappearance of cash, the, a lot of the work that you've been done over the last few weeks, I started to see more of it myself. And I don't think we mentioned it here, but the new or at least one of the new versions of Monopoly gets rid of all the money and it's just sort of bank cards and smart cards. So in some ways, maybe this is... Is, is the chip sort of the canard in that, we're, well, we're already carrying everything around on our, on our devices anyway. And this is kind of a hat trick of tech stories on this New World Next Week episode, James. Any other words about Canada? And of course, that's the thing. Here in the States, everybody's like, oh, well, screw this. I'm going to run away to Canada. Yeah, running away doesn't work because it's happening everywhere. But you, you make an excellent point. We are being tracked already by all of these things that we knowingly, willingly accept that are tracking us. So, yes, absolutely you're right about that. I guess this is for the holdouts, the, the, the strange people who don't want to walk around with tracking devices in their pockets. <laughs> So our second story on this New World Next Week, episode 260, U.S. military invites vetted experts to hack the Pentagon. The Pentagon said just today, March 2nd, 2016, it would invite vetted outside hackers to test the cybersecurity of some public U.S. Defense Department websites as part of a pilot project next month in the first ever such program offered by the federal government. 
Hack the Pentagon, as it is called, is modeled after similar competitions known as bug bounties that are conducted by big U.S. companies like United Continental Holdings to discover gaps in the security of their networks. One senior defense official said thousands of qualified participants were expected to join the initiative. Details and rules were still being worked out, but the competition could involve could involve monetary awards, the Pentagon said. I'm not sure who's giving that money. that our money you're giving away then to hackers? That's sidebar. The Pentagon has long tested its own networks using internal so-called red teams. But this initiative would open at least some of the department's vast network of computer systems to cyber challenges from across industry and academia. The initiative is being led by the Pentagon's, here come the acronyms, Defense Digital Service, or DDS, which is kind of a hilariously close acronym to DDOS, but... That set up last November to bring experts from the U.S. tech industry into the military for short stints. Quote, bringing in the best talent, tech, and processes from the private sector helps us deliver comprehensive, more secure solutions to the DOD, said Chris Lynch, a former Microsoft executive and technology entrepreneur who heads DDS. So he introduced this during a speech at the Commonwealth Club yesterday and said he had already recruited coders from companies like Google, and Shopify for a Pentagon tour of duty. James, again, what if this is one of those stories that's as though the military and the tech sector haven't been working hand-in-hand for a long, long time. Now it's just they're, they're, to use maybe the marriage analogy or relationship analogy, again, they were sneaking around, but now they're, they're totally a couple and kind of public about it. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, as if the military slash the intelligence agencies didn't create Silicon Valley, which they did, by the way. I've done a, I opened a report on the history of that, so you can find out all about it. So yes, I mean, there's that aspect to it. I have, I guess, two takeaways from this. One is, let's just treat it totally straight uh, above the board as if they're telling us the truth and this is all, you know, exactly as presented. Um, I don't know how these things work. I'm not a hacker, but, uh, and I'm sure they've thought about this in some way, but it seems to me if those darn Ruskies and Chinese and, you know, whatever spies spies were always trying to get their hands on those uh, Pentagon secrets, wouldn't they uh, have a spy embedded in one of these teams that would look for the exploits and, you know, vulnerabilities in these systems and then not tell the Pentagon about it, not win the, you know, cash prize or whatever, and use that vulnerability later on? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm sure they ha- they are not exactly giving access to the most secretive databases here, but anyway, I- it's just something that occurs to me. But since we know that they're not above board, and this is not straight truth, the other thing that occurs to me is that um, there's the false flag-, flag possibility here. I mean, how many months down the road do we hear, there's been a massive data breach, oh, it must have been one of those, you know, hacker red teams, or, you know, something along those lines, whether that's true or not, you know, still could serve their their agenda if they want to kick the cyberspace war down the road. So, I don't know. That's just what I think of when I see, see this story. And and that's the thing. You can kind of look at it and take it all those all those different ways. And then what? You know, it's some sort of virtual flag event. And then one of these companies that's involved. Oh well, we're going to have to blow everything. They have. I mean, now all those executive orders would kick in. And you you think the FBI Apple battle is something? Wait till it's sort of an an I nine eleven event happening, James. So let's uh, actually tie in one related story to this, James. Uh, We mentioned or reported about there was that recent meeting where they're going to figure out how to combat ISIS propaganda online. So in that meeting as well, there's a report, James, you tweeted about this. The U.S. military asks tech companies to tweak algorithms to promote certain content. Now, just on the surface, sort of, hey, why don't Google, you guys, not let ISIS propaganda kind of filter to the top of the search results? And the interesting part in there is they say they didn't just ask at this meeting. It said they always ask. That's part of what they want. They want them to manipulate the data that's coming back from a free and open web search. So that is another part to this sort of tech story we're telling, James, on this New World Next Week episode. And we'll move to our third and final story this week. And it's it's all a rich tapestry. Google Alphabet Android boss Eric Schmidt to head up the new Pentagon Innovation Board. I don't know. Maybe this was at the same uh, Commonwealth kind of meeting. No, there's just lots of different events all being rolled out right now. Eric Schmidt, the former chief 
chief executive officer of Google, will head a new Pentagon advisory board aimed at bringing Silicon Valley innovation and best practices to the U.S. military, Defense Secretary Ash Carter said on Wednesday, again today, March 2nd. Carter unveiled the new Defense Innovation Advisory Board with Schmidt during the annual RSA Cybersecurity Conference in San Francisco, saying it would give the Pentagon access to, quote, the brightest technical minds focused on innovation. Schmidt, now the chairman, executive chairman of Alphabet Incorporated, the parent company of Google, said the board would help bridge what he called a clear gap between how the U.S. military and the technology industry operates. So, James, kind of the same story as our second story, but it's one going the other way. At least, uh, who was he, Chris Lynch? At least that guy doesn't still work at Microsoft, as far as we know. Eric Schmidt is like, oh, no, I'll, I'll run private and public both. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, the clear gap that exists between the Pentagon and the tech industry, right? Yeah, clear gap, right. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Alphabet Soup Agency, Inc., uh, Google... Uh, they also own another company, uh, Boston Dynamics. That's been in the news recently. Do you remember the... Why Why is that name ringing a bell for me, James? I think it's because everyone was sharing a video this past week saying, holy crap, have you seen video of this latest robot that... It's those sorts that you watch it and you go... This is the way that uh, many people will die in the coming war of the future um, right. as they send out these drones. And hey, who's on the Pentagon advisory board now? The Apple Google, uh, sorry, the Google Alphabet uh, uh, head honcho himself. So yeah, they're creating the, the mechanized robot armies of the future. And uh, we're watching it happen. I mean, this is Star Wars Episode Two or whatever, where they unveil the, the army that they're building to, to try to defeat the clone army or whatever. I mean, it is happening in real life. And it's it's just insane. And uh, it's just being reported like just part of the news headlines. I've got maybe one other movie reference tie in at the very end of this episode, James, but uh, related again to this story of Schmidt not to be outdone by Google. The DOD also commits to upgrade four million people to Windows 10 before this year is out. So all those machines, again, they all they all work quite well together. Little silver linings, perhaps. I do weekly episodes of Good News Next Week, the spinoff from this New World Next Week. And the latest episode shows people are picking organic quality over tainted bargains. Yes, you might pay a little bit more for organic, but the results are, are provable. London held its largest anti-nuclear protest in decades. And a really interesting one, James, I was just kind of reading into. These new 5D hard disks, five dimensions basically adding on it's a storage sort of story you know we're always hearing of the the exponential explosions of storage this now you're putting entire you know libraries and things on these little on these little disks so again just another bit of movement forward so any kind of good news that we can get unmitigated or not we'd love it hashtag good news next week but some of the other new world next week headlines we are following the ancient silk road is back in business James, as a new train connects China to Tehran, you actually tweeted out a bunch of great stories and headlines for this week's New World Next Week. And about that oil freeze, Russian crude production sets new post-Soviet record in February. So while it seems like they're quite literally building tracks to connect and move forward in the east, kind of seems like meanwhile back here in the Western world, it's Deutsche Bank saying it's time to buy gold. Former Bank of England governor says new financial crash is certain. 37%, so there's a new government report showing sort of what our, what our assets are. 37% of the U.S. government's total reported assets are student loans that are going to be paid back ostensibly. So again, 37% of the United States assets are hopes. <laughs> hopes and changes. And the last thing to note, James, is something that just happened a few hours ago as we are taping on March 2nd, 2016. Chesapeake founder Aubrey McClendon dies in a car crash one day after federal indictment. A big guy who was hefty early on in fracking. He was basically convicted and indicted or not. He was not convicted. He was indicted of price fixing and between companies and his car blew up in a fiery crash. And again, 
the stories we see now it happen and the way that they're shared, James, and I was just kind of seeing this a little bit earlier today. You know, we're looking at Google Maps of where he was. You're seeing essentially the smoking wreckage of this car wreck. And I almost wondered if in some way it is the running man and it is the Hunger Games, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe we're the ones watching the battles being waged by these sort of, you know, middle managers and so-called elites, because we are literally pouring over this information by the moment and cheering the deaths of people and going, oh, man, the well, the market loved McClendon's death. Everything shot right up. It is kind of a bizarre, it's a... It's a strange, strange world. It is strange. There's surveillance and there's surveillance, and uh, and they work both ways. And it's an interesting phenomenon that we're still, I guess, living through. So anyway, we'll continue to document it as it continues to happen. Any deprogramming notes for us, James? Uh, in addition to the weekly good news next week, I've been doing two live broadcasts every weekday. One is all news and one is all music, and you can get all that good stuff at MediaMonarchy.com. And on my own deprogramming note, I just want to let people know I will not be here for New World Next.